um, I have to discuss Brock Turner. And I'm going to do the best I can not to use as much profanity as I really want to use with regard to Brock Turner. But over the weekend, um, Brock Turner was released after serving three months of a six month sentence for sexually assaulting um, a woman, an unconscious woman. I want you to let that sink in for a minute. And there was actually, while that sinks in, there was actually a comedian who put this in such, um, who the hell is something, something on, on Facebook. There's a black guy. He's a comedian. He's hilarious, but he put this in, he put this in such great context that I have to, uh, allude to him. Um, because there's so many people who are saying that, you know, had this been a black guy, uh, he would have got a full sentence and the, you know, this is an example of white privilege and, and yeah, it is an example of white privilege. And we'll talk about that. It is an example of, um, had this been a black guy that he would have gotten, you know, 20 years, but the comedian actually made a great point. He said that in not 20 years in this case, I think the maximum he would have faced was 14 years and the prosecution in the Brock Turner case was seeking six years. Uh, but the judge, uh, gave him six months and three years of probation. Um, the comedian actually said this, he said that we shouldn't look at, and I'm paraphrasing it in a much less funny way. Um, because I'm not a comedian, but it was worthwhile mentioning. He said, we shouldn't look at this and say, had this been a black person, they would have got 20 years because that person raping an unconscious woman would have deserved the black man would have deserved those 20 years. It's not, it's not that, um, it's not that black people who rape somebody should get a lesser sentence. It's that the woman in this case did not receive justice. Right. And so instead of, uh, instead of comparing it as, oh, this, the black, a black person gets treated more harshly. No, the black person who got charged with something like this and got the full sentence, got the sentence they deserved for being guilty of rape. What happened in this case is white privilege helped this man get away with rape and only serve three months in prison. So the justice has fallen. Justice was not served in any sense of the word uh, for this woman who was raped. And so over the weekend, Brock Turner, I mean, who who else? And it's and it's not so much just Brock Turner, even though I'm going to focus on his bitch ass a little bit. It's also the judge. It's primarily the judge. Uh, the judge Brock Turner and his father are all complicit in a level of bitch assness that I have not seen in a long time. And it's not just the sentence, but it's the casual dismissal of the seriousness of this, right? You know, this type of injustice, I'm almost accustomed to happening in a lot of sense with police officers not even getting charged but I'm not really used to seeing um, I'm not really used to seeing people get away like you're caught in the act of rape. This is not an alleged rape. This was the act. Two students, two Swedish exchange students at Stanford caught him in the act and held him down until the police officers got there. So this is not a case of he said, she said, of anything of that nature. This is, we caught you doing this, and all he got was six months and three months with good behavior. I don't know, you know, taking it out of the context of what we see on a regular basis, you know, I think part of me is used to this type of injustice, but it's kind of like they up the ante with Brock Turner. And, and I just want to mention the uh, Persky, that's his name, Judge Aaron Persky. This is what he said. He said a prison sentence, let me bring his bitch ass up on the screen. I'm sorry, I said I wasn't going to use, but, the, but think of the, the gall, right? Think of the, the unmitigated gall to be able to look in the face of, um, to look in the face of this type of criminal act and say these words. He said a prison sentence would have a severe impact on Brock Turner. And I don't think that Brock Turner 
will be danger, a danger to others. So you have Brock Turner who rapes a woman who is unconscious behind a dumpster who later on blamed it on the alcohol, who by blaming it on the alcohol took no responsibility in his actions because I have been, I have been pissed, pissed drunk to the point where I should not have been driving and ran off the road drunk. And in no circumstances when I have been that drunk to the point where somebody has to carry me to my bed, did rape ever come across my mind? Women carry me to my bed because I'm so drunk. Did rape ever come across my mind? So by him blaming it on alcohol, he tries to absolve all of his responsibility to this. So that sets it so that you can fix your mind to understand this. He has taken no responsibility because of his excuse, blaming it on the alcohol. And now the judge you know, this is I'm kind of just recapping it because I didn't get a chance to cover it a lot. But the fact that he got out this weekend is the icing on the cake. And so the judge says the prison is going to have a have a negative impact on his life. That's the whole point of prison. Genius. So bitch ass number one is Brock Turner for one. Using alcohol as an excuse to rape somebody. Bitch ass number two is Judge Aaron Pers per whatever his name is. Hang on, let me, I want to make sure I call his name correctly. Judge Persky, Aaron Persky, for thinking more about the person who committed this act than the person who was victimized by this act. Because God forbid, you don't want to mess up the life of someone who just messed up the life of someone else. Bitch ass number three. And this whole equation of Turner, Brock Turner, bitch assness is his father. And I do believe I have a picture of his father. Yeah. Dan Turner, who's on your screen now. You've already heard it, but let me put it in the context. He said, this is the statement. He says, his life, poor Brock, his life will never be the one that he dreamed about and worked so hard to achieve. That is a steep price to pay for 20 minutes of action. If you want to see, I hear a lot of people talking about white male privilege. If you want to see the quintessential example of not even white male privilege, but arrogance. That Dan Turner fixed his mouth to refer to this sexual assault of a of a woman who was passed out by his son and described it as 20 minutes of action. 20 minutes of action is going to the arcade and playing 20 minutes of games with a whole bunch of people. 20 minutes of action is going to play laser tag and you have action, you know, you're running around and you're dodging and you're ducking and turning. 20 minutes of action might even be a 20 minute scene in a movie that's action. Raping someone you simple minded, disgusting son of a rape is not action. Rape used to be a crime. But apparently, if you're wealthy enough and you're white enough and your parents are elite enough. It's a crime only punishable by three months of, pro uh, of, of prison. Can you even call it prison at three months? That's like county lockup. People are spending more time in jail for not paying child support and not paying their uh, 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 traffic ticket than this dude paid for rape. But he's out. He's a registered sex offender. Updated on information. Let me give you some new information, right? Everything I've said so far, everyone should have known already. Uh, but on your screen is... Um, Brock Allen Turner, he registered today um, with his mother trying to cover him up and trying to protect him, registered as a sex offender in Ohio. Um, I've redacted his address because still, you know, even though I think he's a bitch ass, I'm, I'm not. So, you know, if you want to find his address, you can you can dox him yourself. But um, that's him. Um, I want to bring up some other screens because normally I absolutely don't condone. There's a lot of stuff I don't condone. But when you see the system work like this, um, 
I don't know. It, it brings out something different. So there's a protest happening in front of his house. Um, this is an armed, uh, <laughs> an armed man who said, if I rape Brock, will I only do three months? Um, there's another man here. Um, I can't really read out his sign, but he's armed also calling Brock a rapist. And uh, I think there's one more sign here. Um, yeah, but basically they're armed protesters who are standing outside of Brock Turner's house who are now um, going to be a constant reminder to Brock and his family of what kind of piece of shit they raised. And I'm sorry. Yes, people can be forgiven, but after you pay the price, and Brock has not paid the price, right? People can be rehabilitated after you paid your price. Brock has not paid his price. Maybe his parents should not be subjected to this type of stuff. Yeah, but you know what? His dad went out there and said 20 minutes of action, referred to the rape and assault of a woman as 20 minutes of action. So his dad is every bit deserving of this public ridicule that he and his son need to get every day for the rest of their natural lives. So that ultimately it would have been better for Brock to have gone to jail than to skirt out on justice and spit in the face of forget about everyone who sees the injustice spit in the face of all the victims of rape who never got justice. 20 minutes of action. That's what this man referred to it as. Three months in jail. This is what his sentence was. All because Brock Turner blames it on the alcohol. You have to have, you, you know what? Let's be real. Being drunk only empowers you to do the things that you wanted to do in the first place. I never did anything while drunk that I did not want to do while I was sober, except for run into a ditch. <laughs> That's the only thing I did drunk that I did not intend to do sober. If you, if you want to express your love to somebody, you get drunk and you do it. You've been planning on doing that. If you, if you wanted to fight somebody, you get drunk and do it because you had already had it in your mind. That's it. Alcohol does not reprogram you to do something that you never thought about. So if you were a, so if you are a drunk rapist, chances are you are a sober rapist. Take it from somebody who's drunk, had more to drink than probably. Anyway, I want to know what you think about these stories so far. There's a lot more to cover. 857-600-0518. Um, what do you think? Three months, you know, you know and, 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 and let's not be fooled, right? A guy who has the gall to get on, uh, to make a statement calling this 20 minutes of action. Um, obviously, they're wealthy. They have enough influence. Brock is going to have an okay life. He may never have a public life, but he's going to find a job. One of his dad's buddies is going to help him get a job and make some money and try to have the best life he can have at this point. Meanwhile, laughing in the face of um, our justice system. Even the prosecutors in this case, even the prosecutors in this case were really pissed off about this and rightfully so. Um, the prosecutors in this case said that the, the, the punishment does not fit the crime. Normally we see it in the other, you know, in, in, in another kind of respect, let's take rape off the, off the table. We talk about like, uh, uh, charges that people in time that people get for, for marijuana, you know, it's usually in the opposite direction that the punishment doesn't fit the crime where you end up spending years in jail for a nonviolent drug offense. But in this case, the, the, the punishment doesn't fit the crime because you spent three months in jail for raping an unconscious woman.